Hello, Wade Explorers. Thanks for joining us again and welcome back to another exciting and informative video on our YouTube channel. If you're joining us for the first time, I want to thank you for watching. For those of you who follow our channel, you notice we focus on informative and educating content on this channel. Today, we are looking at two global cities. In this episode, I will have the opportunity to discuss both cities, what makes them so unique, and more importantly, their size and their strategic nature, and the reason why they continue to attract tourists from around the world. In this case, I'm talking about the amazing city of London in the United Kingdom, and also the wonderful city of Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. In this episode also, I will discuss some very important characteristics what makes them so exceptional around the world and at the end of this video you will know london in the united kingdom and also kinshasa in the drc congo like never before seen so without any more delay let's just dive straight into it in looking at london which is the first city we're gonna focus on london the capital of the united kingdom it is amongst the oldest of the world's great cities its history spanning nearly two millennia and one of the most cosmopolitan by far Britain's largest metropolis is also the country's economic, transportation, and cultural center. In looking at this, London is situated in southeastern England, lying astroitly to the River Thames, some 50 miles or 80 kilometers upstream from the estuaries of the North Sea. In satellite photographs, if you consider looking at this, the metropolis can be seen and sit compactly in the green belt of the open land, which is principally highway. In looking at this, around in the radius of about 30 kilometers from the city center, the growth of the built-up area was halted by strict town planning, controlled in the mid-1950s. Its physical limits more or less correspond to administrative and statistical boundaries separating the metropolitan area of Greater London from the home counties of Kent, Surrey, Berkshire and also uh, to the south of the, the river and the Buckinghamshire, Hertfordshire and Essex to the north. The historical counties of Kent, Hertfordshire and Essex extend in the area beyond the current administrative counties with some names to include substantial part of the metropolitan county of Greater London which was founded in 1965. Most Greater London south of the Thames belongs to the historical county of Surrey while most of Greater London north of the Thames belongs to historical to the county of Middlesex. Areas Greater London over 607 square miles so the point are looking at 1500 over 1500 square kilometers and looking at that uh, Greater London also uh, is an amazing area and considering this particular amazing city in the UK if the borders on the metropolis is well defined its internal structures is immensely complicated and defies description indeed London defining characteristic is absence to overall form. It is physically a polycentric city with many core districts and no clear hierarchy among them. London has at least two and sometimes more or everything so to point out. Cities, mayors, dioceses, cathedrals, chambers of commerce, police force, opera house, orchestra and also universities. In every aspect it functions as a compound or confederal metropolis. Moving forward. Historically, London grew from three distinctive centers, the wallet settlement founded by the Romans on the banks of the Thames. It is the first century C, so to point out, today known as the City of London, the square mile or simply the city facing it across the bridge on the lower grave of the South Bank. The suburb of the South Work is a mile upstream of the great southward bend of the river. The city of Westminster, the three settlements and the distinctive complementary roles. London, the city developed as a center of trade, commerce, banking, South Works and also borough became known for its uh, monasteries, hospitals, inns, fairs, pleasure houses and great theatre of Elizabeth London. The rules so the point out since 1587, the Swan of 1595 and also the world's famous globe of 1599 so the look at that. Westminster grew up around an abbey which around the royal palace and is at the strain. The entry central apparatus of the British state is legislative, executive and also judiciary. It also boosts spacious pathways and most fashionable districts for living and shopping. The West End, the North Bank settlement, merged into a single built-up area in the early decades of the 17th century, but that did not combine uh, into the single enlarged municipality. 
the city of London was unique among Europe's capital cities in retaining its medieval boundaries. The Western Minister and other suburbs were left to develop their own administrative structure. A pattern replicated a hundred times over London exploded its size, becoming a prototype of the modern metropolis. Moving forward, the population of London already exceeded millions of people by 1800. A century later, it reached over 6.5 million. The city's uh, physical expansion was not uh, constrained either but by military defenses, highly influential factors on continental Europe at the time, or by in intervention of state power. So to evident in looking at this in the town planning or like cities like Paris, uh, Vienna, Rome and other capitals of the continental Europe. Although much of the land around London was owned by the aristocracy, the church and other institutions in that area, and also feudal roots, its develop was one of the first unfettered capitalism driven by housing demands of the rising middle class. Free-ranging buildings, speculations engulfed villages and small towns over and over and within and also regions with which the improvements in transportation, technology and purchasing power. The solidly built up area of London measured uh, some five miles, looking at eight kilometers from the east uh, to the west in 19, uh, 1750 and also 24 kilometers as of 1850. In looking at this, London is a transformative European capital. Looking at other characteristics, the evacuation and also bombing during the World War II were turning points in London's history because they brought a large area of expansive sub urbanization and suburban end. After the war, the government decided that the metropolis has grown too much and also far its own economic, social and good for its own growth was a strategic risk. A green belt was imposed and subsequent growth was diverted beyond it. Finally, London administrative boundaries were redrawn to incorporate almost the entire and physical metropolis, resulting in the present-day Greater London. In looking at this, the London familiar to international visitors is a much smaller place than a tourist traffic concentrated on an area defined by the main attractiveness. Also, each joined between 1 and 7 million visitors in the course of each year. Buckingham Palace, the British Museum, the National Gallery, the Westminster Abbey, the Madame Tussauds and the Warwick's Collection, the Tour of London and the, the Great South Kensington Museum, Natural History of Science and Victoria Albert and the Tate Gallery. In some cases, in scale, London most tourist visit resembles the metropolis as it was in the 18th century and the city perhaps 10 kilometers so the look at 26 kilometers squareable and fit into the directions from the Trafalgar Square. In looking at this, resident Londoners see the metropolis in even more localized terms. Property correspondents and estate agents like to describe London as a collection of villages and there is some truth in their cliche. Because London has developed in a dispersed, haphazard fashion from an early stage, many of its later suburbs were able to grow around or within reach of some, some existence and also nucleuses such as the church, coaching inn and also mile park or common buildings of different ages and types helps to define the characteristics of residential areas as well as to relieve suburban uh, monotony. The population in the various neighborhoods tends to be diverse because the working of the English housing market has provided more areas, even the most exclusive, with at least some public rental housing. The chemistry of location, building stocks, local amenities and property values combined with that of the multi a multi population to give rise to great varieties of residential microcosm. So to point out, when the metropolis, neighborhood ties are strong. Whatever Londoners meet and also talk, they evidently compare nuances of the district in which they live because they live seems to come from such an amazing different locations and talk about their experiences in that different areas that they live. If you are new to this channel, we will encourage you to subscribe and share our videos to your different network. In looking at the beautiful and amazing city of Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of Congo on the other hand. Hello it is Plurus. thanks for joining us again and welcome back to another informative video on our YouTube channel. On today's episode, we are taking you inside one of Africa's Bao Bao mega city, the Kinshasa we are talking about here. For those of you who don't know Kinshasa, in this video, 
we shall dive deep into one of Africa's largest capital and a city that's found in one of Africa's largest country. We shall explore in greater details. We shall dive more in details with regards to the amazing historical importance of the city of Kinshasa for the people of the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Africa at large. We shall lay down to you the reason why this city is a mega city in the continent and more importantly, we shall narrow down this particular episode in exploring some strategic and important characteristics of this mega city in the African continent. We shall close this episode in laying its historical importance and the reason why you should consider visiting this transformative African capital. As we have promised in this episode that we shall be focusing on the amazing capital of Kinshasa, talking about its transformative nature. Kinshasa is the capital and the largest city in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It is the third largest city in Africa, after Cairo and Lagos, and the second largest French-speaking city in the world other than Paris, France. Formerly known as Leopoldville, it was founded and named by Henry Moton Stanley in, that was in 1881 in honor of King Leopold II of Belgium, who controlled the vast territory known as the Congo Free States. Kinshasa is located on the southern banks of the Congo River with Brazzaville on the north bank of the Congo River. Kinshasa is the only capital city that faces another national capital. The combined population of the two capitals is approximately just over 12 million people, with over 10 million uh, in Kinshasa and also suburbans in about uh, looking at this transformative nature of this population explosion in this African city, with over 1. Point something million inhabitants in the northern neighbor. We're talking about uh, the other uh, Congo year. Although in 1881 it is the official founding date. African villagers lived in what is now called Kinshasa for hundreds of years. In the 15th century, Kinshasa became an important center for Portuguese slave trade and merchants in what was then the Kingdom of the Congo. If you consider the way this transformative African nation has become, considering its beautiful capital, Kinshasa is a mega city in the African continent, considering its capacity in drawing business and also its historical importance. The area began to grow uh, when Belgian colonial officials arrived at around 1881. As of 1898, a rail line linking uh, that the coastal port of uh, Matindi and Leopoldville leading to the city's rapid development. By 1920, when Leopoldville was named the capital of the Belgian Congo, it, it had a population of approximately 15,000 people. Looking at the way the transformative nature in considering the historical nature and importance of this uh, mega city in the continent of Africa, Lepovi has slightly over uh, 400,000 people when the Congo gained independence in 1960. The city like uh, countryside was soon divided by a five year civil war. As of 1964, Mobutu Seko, the army chief of staff, seized power and declared himself president of the nation. Mobutu provided a stable, if often brutal, government to the city and its nation for the next three decades. As part of his Africanization policy, he renamed the city Kinshasa in 1966 after the village of Kinshasa, that's the Kinshasa then, which once stood on the other side. Kinshasa became internationally famous as of 1990, uh, 1974 uh, when it's October 30th it hosted the world uh, heavyweight boxing title fight between George Foreman, the title holder, and Muhammad Ali, a successful challenger. If you are new to our channel, we will encourage you to subscribe and share our videos to your different network. Although Kinshasa was almost famous for corruption and violence during that period during Mobutu's reign. It continued to attract newcomers from throughout the nations and also people flogging into Kinshasa in looking at its transformative nature. The city was the financial and manufacturing center for the Congo and the place through which you're talking about most of the diamonds, copper and other natural resources were processed. 
also became the major intellectual center of Central Africa with flourishing communities of musicians and also artists. If you consider this transformative African capital, talking about Kinshasa here, even after Mobutu Sesseko uh, lost power in, uh, in a civil war and fled uh, Kinshasa as of 1997, there has been little progress uh, in, in other aspects. In general, the economy has revamped in a number of ways. Kinshasa talking about its important uh, capacity in the uh, country of uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It's an economic hub, so to point out, it's attracted businesses and companies, mega corporations from all over the world that have established themselves in this mega African city. The economy in a different way has its own challenges, but again, the people of the uh, uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo, focusing on Kinshasa in this episode, have transformed their capital. In looking at this, managing large population increase in a number of ways, of course, like any other African capital, with unemployment and other challenges uh, affecting the country, we are looking at how the Congo, uh, we're talking about uh, Kinshasa in particular, uh, will be emerging itself at a strategic hub considering an international airport and also uh, other mega businesses that are making sure that uh, employment is being created as is the main port of entry uh, into this mega African country. If you are new to this channel, we will encourage you to subscribe and share our videos to your different network. If you look at Kinshasa, it is home to University of Kinshasa considering that a Congo Protestant University as well and the National Pedagogy University is also uh, the medical and major center for the Congo. Other institutions include a law school, an archaeological museum, a sports stadium and a tropical disease research center. Since the official language of Kinshasa is French, if present population trend holds, the city is expected to overtake Paris as the largest French-speaking urban area in the world considering that moving up to 2024 to 2025. Thanks very much for watching Edusplora. If you are new to our channel, we will encourage you to subscribe, share our videos to your different network. That's all what we got for you with regards to this amazing African capital. Kinshasa just has a lot of attraction for those of you who plan to visit. There are a number of things you could do while you are in this city. We encourage you to check your travel plans to Kinshasa. It is a beautiful and a mega African city that would transform and wire your experience when you spend time in this beautiful capital uh, in, in the African continent. So I want to thank you for watching. We encourage you to watch our other episode on our YouTube channel. We also like to know if you are from the GRC Congo or you have visited this particular African capital. We would like to know what your experiences were. Otherwise, we'd like you to drop a comment to us and let us know if we were spot on. If you think that we've left out something, we would like to hear from you from the comment section. For now, I want to thank you for watching the Explorer. We're looking forward to meeting you in our next episode. And have a good day. Bye-bye.